Hey, hey, what up, my comic book peeps? Uh, it's your boy J Rocks hitting you with uh, another graphic novel haul. Huh? This was a part three to a three part order to a three orders I made in, in a day or two or whatever it was. Again, um, actually, this one's not all in stock. This one I have two books that I got off eBay, and I'm just gonna include them in the haul with my in stock trade stuff. All right, we got four paperbacks and we got two hardcovers, and these are two. Well, one I'm really excited about. I've been waiting for this shit for a minute. For a hot one, man. And, and another one that... um I also want it because I want to add it to the collection. But I can't say I'm excited or not. I really don't know what's in it. But whenever it's an X-Men omnibus, it's an X-Men title, I'm always down with that. And I'm always excited for it. So first, let's start off with the smaller stuff. Um... I got these, I have these in hardcover, but I'm gonna get rid of them, so I'm gonna, I'm starting to get the paperbacks. It's, uh, Plague of Frogs Volume 1. I mean, this is Plague of Frogs Volume 1. And the other one was Volume 4. The spine. It's the same exact issue, same material that will be in the hardcovers. But they're a lot thinner, and the hardcovers are pretty thick, they're like that each, even though it's has the same material obviously it's because the pages are a lot thicker more sturdier and so forth now i decided to get the paperbacks because i'm most likely gonna get rid of the hard covers and put them up for trade or sell or whatever and um it's more like i like the hard covers but it's more to make space i need to make space on my shelves and uh, so i'm downgrading to the paperbacks most if it's not an omnibus if it's a hardcover and they have a paperback format that has the same exact material. I'm gonna be downgrading a lot of my stuff to to paperbacks. If they're the thick paperbacks, I don't want any of the thin ones or anything like that. If it's like epic collections and stuff like that, and it's not collected in omnibus, then I'll collect it. I'm gonna narrow it down to either thick trades or omnibuses. I'm kind of gonna get rid of oversized hardcovers and so forth, or just regular hardcovers um that's the plan i don't know i'm there's some i might make exceptions for because i want to keep them in a certain format we'll see it's still a work in progress it's kind of an experiment still um and also so i'm gonna start off with this series this i will be downgrading and then other series will as we go we'll see how everything unfolds i guess i'll pick and choose by series uh do we really need to get into the interiors of these uh we all know what magnolias are we all know how it looks we are familiar with almost everybody got vprd um so we're just gonna get on to the next book because that one really i mean i feel like we really don't need an introduction now these two are not from in stock i got these uh at the low 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 price of um I'm not even gonna say what price because I can't really remember, but it was a good bargain. It was cheaper than in stock. Just put it that way. That's that's what I remember. That's why I didn't get them on in stock, and I got them on uh, eBay. Now these you got a deep cut, deep cut, homie, because of this. That just means it's already stuff they're trying to get rid of. They're trying to make space in their inventory for new shit coming in. So everything marked like that must go overstock this really does not bug me it really does not affect the reading uh when i'm reading or whatever uh for the discount i don't mind I, you could put that on all my books if you're gonna give me a cheaper price now it does have a little bit of damage here but i think that's just from the packaging and so forth this is not a big issue this is cable uh the hellfire hunt it's x-men it's cable it's not x-men but it's cable it's x-men universe anyways um, it's pretty chunky. This is the spine. Nice format. They're not bad. I don't mind getting these from uh, Marvel. The regular price is forty dollar cover price for these. So I don't. I mean, I don't think I would personally pay forty for something like this. But if you could get it for around fifteen, twelve, I mean, I'd hop on it. If assuming you like Cable, or you like X Men, and so forth. To me, I'm not. I don't have a lot of Marvel outside of Punisher and uh, X Men. To me, X Men is. I mean, it's Marvel, but it's its own universe. Anything 80s, 90s X Men, it's its own universe. The X Verse, you know, X Universe, whatever. X Titles, million different names they got for it. 
But um, just collecting all that X uh, titles, it's within its own universe. You don't need the Avengers. You don't need any of that. So growing up, I've always collected. I always liked reading the X Men stuff. And I didn't bother with Iron Man, Captain America. As I've grown up, I've read some of them now. But I read some Spider Man, and outside of Spider Man and Punisher, it was just strictly the X titles. And I felt that in itself is bigger than the Valiant universe, for example. Um, so yeah, let's uh let's get into some of these interiors real quick. Alright, now some of these issues on this are written by James Robinson, who wrote um what is it, Starman? I've never read it. And uh, some of these are by Joe Casey. I'm a little more familiar with Joe Casey and I like what I've read of his. So uh hopefully this will be good. I have never read this particular era of cable. I remember a lot of that cable not being that great honestly from what I remember back in the day but haven't read this just some little art here oh, this is interesting again I'm opening the books for the first time with you guys so I don't know what to expect in here just like you don't unless you own the book Mutant Outlaw connected with tabloid murders huh like what they did with this page here see how it fits in with the story Ooh, two page spread that's the one that's on the cover the harbinger of apocalypse huh, so i guess this happened during the time leading up to the joke well i don't know i don't know if it led up to the joke apocalypse to be honest with you because Cable's always fighting Apocalypse. It's kind of like his main villain. Like the X-Men are with uh, Magneto. Alright, that's enough for the interiors. Let's check out the what content it contains. Machine Man and Bastion Annual. Cable and Machine Man Annual. 1998. Oh, so this is after the Age of Apocalypse. Yeah, the creators on it. Oh, we got Steven Platt on some of this. I always remember Steven Platt with Image. His art was very 90s Image. All right. Uh, all right, the ne next book, I bought these two together. This one I also bought with the Fable one. This one's called Weird World. It's in great condition. It's Warriors of the Shadow Realm. This art, it really grabbed me. I, I've seen this since back in the day. I've seen this about... I seen this title honestly like maybe three four years ago so it's it's not that new i saw it because i got into collecting over three years ago like three and a half years of we're getting towards four years that i've been collecting books and uh this was one of the ones i saw early on on InStock trades when i started collecting the trade format and collected format i started collecting that about three years ago it's like i think comes about four years ago i was reading singles and so forth and key issues for about a year then I found out about omnibuses and, and hardcovers and so forth. And I kind of slowly let go of the singles and started going towards these because you get the complete stories. And I had so much on, on stuff I haven't read that I need to catch up on. And this was the best way to do it. It includes everything you will need, the tie-ins and so forth from other series. So I started buying them this way. I just found it more convenient for myself. And they look nice on shelves. Easier to just pick up and grab whenever you want. Instead of digging through boxes for certain issues you want to read. And um, yeah, so I'm, I'm still enough course here. Like I was saying, this one I saw it when I started collecting and I started going to in stock trades. I saw this early on, and it, this cover always I always thought it was tight, and it was interesting. I always wanted to get it, but it was twenty bucks. So I was always like, oh, do I want to? Do I? I was like twenty bucks I could buy a hardcover or something else I'm looking for. So I was interested, but not that interested in it. And I finally caught it at a decent deal about. I think fourteen dollars or something like that. So I was like, all right, at fourteen, uh, I think it was fourteen or twelve or something. Well, I got it with the cable book. I think it was like buy one get one half off or something like that, or buy one some something like that. I can't even remember. But anyways, the point is, this is the art. This collects a bunch of weird stuff. I'm not, but this is the art, the interior art, some of the interior art. The point is, it's fantasy, cool artwork, sea monsters. I mean, why wouldn't you want to read this? You know what I'm saying? There's the spine. 
This goes for $35 cover price. So you find that in for an in stock for $17, I believe, or like $19. Uh, let's flip to some of the pages real quick and we'll get an idea of what we can expect on this. I think I talked about that cover already, the bag, but let's see what it contains. It's a lot of odd random issues of different things. Marvel Premiere, Marvel Fanfare 24 through 26, Super Special 11 through 13. It's um Mike Plug. Okay, so he's the artist. Definitely digging his art. Might check out more of his stuff down the road. Depending on how I feel about this story. Some of the art, very fantasy, of course, and um, it's elves. This looks like what late eighties art style. I've never read Elf Quest. But I don't know why that popped in my head right now, digging through this art right now. Maybe just because it's elves, I don't know. I hear Elf Quest is not bad either. I, I should check it out one of these days. That's something that might, I mean, I could find them pretty cheap, but something I might just read digitally instead. I don't even know, are, are they in color or are they in black and white? If you guys know, uh, let me know. Oh, look at here. The art's a lot different here. Let me check this page out. Huh. Thought it was a cover. The art definitely changes in tone here. I'm digging this art a lot more. Yeah, this looks this looks pretty cool. Looks like something I'll, I'll dig. I like uh, fantasy and stuff like that. Alright, uh, let's get to the next book. Alright. I'm pumped for this one. I'm, this is definitely on a short list of to read. When I say short list, I mean maybe 10, 12 books on the list. It's on those top 12 or so um, on the reading list. Once I get those, then I start a new to read list. Um, but yeah, I've been waiting for this for about a year and a half when I heard about it, when I heard about the singles. I avoided the trades because I wanted to get the whole complete series in one hardcover. This is um the Complete Life and Death Collection. Written by Dan Abnick, different artists. It's a big ass book. It's um very tall, bigger than your omnibuses, but it's thinner, it's less content, it's about 20 issues. It collects this is a spine. Let me go this way. It collects um no yep, it's this way. It collects Predator, Alien, Prometheus, and Alien vs. Predator. Spine's nothing fancy, but it is. Oh here's the back. That should look bad right there. It should look hard on me. And it is, um, Dan Abnett wrote the whole series. So it's four series and somehow they all tie in together into one series, like an event, like a Marvel event or something, right? And you had the same writer on the whole thing. So uh, I feel it's better when one writer's on the whole thing than if you had three or four different ones because he knows what he's doing and he knows how to tie in things and so forth. When you have four different um, creators, they might not all be on the same page. They might have different ideas or whatever and... It can feel like muddled up, if you will, or I don't know what, what the, for lack of a better word, but it, it can screw things up, basically. So, yeah, um, I'm pumped for this, and it's that Nabnet. I'm a fan. I still need to get his Heroes for Hire. People be sleeping on that shit. I never see it in anybody's collection or in anybody's halls, including myself. I'm guilty of it, too, and I need to get it because his Dan Abnett is really good. Is, is, I'm digging that shit and honestly, I don't know why I haven't bought it but I think it's just because so much other stuff comes out that I want as well but but yeah hop on that guys if, if you catch a slipping out a deal or or you need an extra book to throw on your on your order for the free shipping uh, I, I recommend it it's really good stuff um so anyways yeah I read that from Dan Abnet and I and I uh, haven't read this but I expect it to be good and I read um what is that series he did a while back where they're anthropomorphic animals? I read a little bit of that. It was pretty good. I still haven't read his Guardians, even though I own it. I just haven't got around to it because I want to read the stuff that leads up to it. So, yeah, that's the reason. A lot of Marvel stuff, I'm, like the main stuff I want to read, I, I'm like, I want to read everything that comes that, that's leading to it instead of just going uh, straight into a cold because I hear it will enhance your experience. There might be little clues, little stuff that pays off there that you appreciate a little more. 
So that's why I've been lagging it on that. But yeah, um, let's get into some of the interiors on this real quick. All right, here's the cover to um this library edition book. It's pretty tight. I like one thing I like about Predator and Alien. You could tell a million different style of stories if you wanted to, or if you want to, because the story is not necessarily about Predator and they're not necessarily about Alien. They're about the people, and this is just the antagonist that's going around killing them, whatever. So you could always have random different types of characters in the stories and they're always going to be about them. So you could always get a story, whatever feel you want. They could fit into any genre, really. And um, they're kind of one dimension. They're going to be the same, but it's what you do with the other characters that matters to what kind of story you're going to do. Are they astron astronauts? You're going to be dealing with soldiers or civilians in the inner city. You know, you can go anywhere with it, much like Batman. Uh, so let's check out some of the interiors now. Nice page right here. You know predators are be be basically like, um, they're like warriors, like tribes. You got that tribe mentality, uh, warrior mentality. You got to prove yourself. They always go after the biggest game. Whoever's the biggest threat, that's who they got to, they like to battle to prove themselves. Look at this page right here. This shit looks sick right here. Just sick with it, homie. Look at that shit. Damn. So here, obviously, they're dealing with soldiers. Alien. Alien's a little more tricky. I kind of like aliens in space all the time, and a planet, and a spaceship. Not a big fan of them being in a inner city. Not that I've read a book where they are. I'm just saying I wouldn't be a fan of that. I read one where they're in the jungle, and it... Felt like Predator more than it did Alien to me. It's a little weird because I like the... I don't know. I like Predator as a character more than Alien. But I like I tend to like the Alien stories more than the Predator ones. So, you know, there you go. That's a little weird. Okay, I think you get different artists. Let's go skip a little bit farther ahead. I think it has different artists on this. Let's see, does this, yeah, this looks a little different. But you get the same writer on the whole thing. I don't want to spoil anything from, for you guys or for myself because I haven't read this. And I am a little excited for this one. So I'm going to leave it there. And um, let's get to the last book of the hall. All right. Last book of the hall is this Omni. But I like the, it feels real light. Thin, it's not too thick. It's not thin, thin, like a hardcover. Like oversized hardcover. It's big enough to be an Omni, but it's, you know, it's small enough where I could wield it and I could beat it comfortably. It's not too huge. I like the size. It's a nice, nice fit. It's a nice weight to it. Um, it's the Cyclops of Phoenix. Cyclops and Phoenix. Now people look at this cover. It's a nice cover. I'm digging it. I, honestly, I like it. I think oh, it's gonna be all about romance and the marriage and the relationship. Guys, guys, I was guilty of that when I first started buying these type of books. And um, it's X-Men. It's still the same X-Men. It's going to be what you expect in X-Men. I used to do that when I saw these. Because when you read the single issues, you see a cover like this. You're like, oh, this issue is going to be just about this. And you're probably right. That's just that issue. You know what I mean? Here, you can make like 40 issues. They're not all going to be just about their, their relationship. It's just going to be this issue is going to be about that. Maybe a, a story arc of like five issues. Then you still got a bunch of other issues. We're gonna get back to X Men stuff. So yeah, don't let don't let that uh, fool you. The, the, it's not the whole tone is not gonna be like this on the book. I have personally not read all these issues, so I can't tell you uh, how great they are. But I will be getting around to them. And um, this is a hundred twenty five dollar cover price. Scott Liddell writes some of this, which I liked his uh, X Men, and it also has a lot of other stuff. So. Uh, Let's get into it. Let's check out the interiors and we'll check out what issues are included up in here. All right. So here's the, the last book of the haul. Um, pretty sure you guys seen it in a lot of other videos already. Uh, if you haven't, go ahead and check some of those uh, reviews or overviews out. I think I might just leave my copy closed for the time being. I do want to talk about a little bit about the design. See how the colors here are darker. 
see how the, the characters here are darker than when it goes over here they turn lighter i was really was not a fan of that i wish they would have kept the colors the same color tone as over here brighter so these letters could stand out more and these letters could stand out more it's so light like from a distance you can't even see what it says but other than that I, i'm digging the the design i did i really don't care about that too much uh, i do like this too all the new x-men omnibuses have been having this x-men logo i've been complaining about that for like two years already i go why don't they all have this why don't they all have it and now all of them are finally starting to have this which i like um i like that they all have this and they all they do is change the color schemes and so forth because to me the x-men cartoons had this logo and every omnibus should have that on the spine this is the back of it all the characters here got enough for the wedding you'll be familiar with all of them if you read x-men they're all uh, reoccurring characters pretty famous here's the content included inside x-men 26 through 35 avengers 368 369 cable 6 through 8 hmm. and uh uncanny x-men 307 to 310 after this i think you read the palanx covenant which a lot of people say nah, it's not that great this and that i honestly i enjoyed it i kind of i, I like the palanx covenant and um yeah i guess that's all i got for you in this haul uh if you want to see more videos like this hit that subscribe button after you hit that subscribe button hit that bell so i can notify you on your feed every time and uh, also follow me on twitter on um, goodreads definitely follow me on goodreads that's where i do all my reviews i write them right there you could write reading reviews and that's where you keep track of your books i keep track every time i make a purchase i add it to my uh, list of books i have right there once i read it i do a review on it so i know it's read so i can refresh my memory in case i ever forget or whatever so if you don't have one of those uh goodread profiles go ahead and make one and uh, go ahead and follow me i'll follow you back um uh, my link is down below for my goodreads and uh, let's see, I guess that's all I got for today and I'll check you guys out next time.